Hi everyone, this is our video on the comparison of variable costing and absorption costing when talking about cost behavior. So let's start our conversation with absorption costing. Absorption costing is what you're most used to seeing. This is required by GAAP and it assigns all of the manufacturing cost to your product costs. So remember product costs were direct materials, direct labor, and overhead. So under absorption costing, cost of goods sold absorbs all of our product cost. It's a little bit different under variable costing, which we'll talk about a little bit more, de more detail on the next slide, but if you'll notice in the center of the screen here, the fixed overhead under variable cost is not included as part of cost of goods sold. The income statement used for absorption costing is, through to, is the traditional gross profit income statement, where we have our sales revenue, less cost of goods sold gives us gross profit. And from gross profit, we'll subtract all of our operating expenses to give us our operating income. So some bullet points to remember about variable costing. Variable costing assigns only variable manufacturing cost to the products. So that would be your direct materials and your direct labor, as well as your variable overhead. The fixed overhead under variable costing is actually a period cost. So fixed overhead would be expensed when it's incurred. Variable costing is not something that gets published to the public. Um, it's used for internal managerial decision making. And we do not use the traditional gross profit income statement under variable costing. We use something called the contribution margin income statement. So let's take a look at what that would look like. So here is a contribution margin income statement. You can see we still start with our sales revenue, but now we're going to, to subtract first our variable expenses only. That will give us what's called contribution margin. And from contribution margin, we'll subtract our fixed expenses, and that will give us operating income. So what you should note from a contribution margin income statement is we have separated our cost by how they behave. So let's look at an example um, with some data here that we can prepare an income statement under variable costing as well as an income statement under absorption costing so you can get an example of how this works. So O'Neill's products manufactures a single product. The cost, sales, and production information for the company and its single product is as follows. So we're given some information there. So what I'd like for you to do is pause the video. I would like for you to try and prepare an income statement under variable costing. So remember that's a contribution margin income statement. And as well as, number two, prepare an income statement under absorption costing. That's the traditional gross profit income statement. Once you have completed one or both of these questions, come back and we'll take a look at them together. Okay, so here is the income statement you should have gotten under variable costing. So this is the contribution margin income statement. So we start with our sales, which was based on $65 per unit sold, and we sold 12,000 units. So we get sales revenue of $780,000. Then we subtract all of our variable cost. Well, in this problem, we had variable cost of goods sold, which was $35 per unit, and we had variable operating expenses at $2 per unit. So after we subtract those, those variable costs of $444,000, we get a contribution margin of $336,000. From there, we're going to subtract all of our fixed cost. In this case, we had manufacturing overhead fixed cost of $132,000 and fixed operating cost of $85,000 for a total of $217,000. When you subtract the fixed cost from contribution margin, we're left with operating income of $119,000. Now, let's take a look at the traditional gross profit income statement. So you'll notice it's quite a bit smaller. Um, we still start with our sales revenue, which is the same as it was under the contribution margin income statement, $780,000. But this time, we subtract cost of goods sold, which encompasses all of our product cost, which would be direct materials, direct labor, variable overhead, as well as fixed overhead. 
So we have that additional $132,000 that we're going to add to our cost of goods sold here. We subtract that from our sales revenue to give us a gross profit of $228,000. From that, we're going to subtract our operating expenses, which is a little bit different this time because now we have both variable and fixed costs involved in our operating expenses as well. So we have 12,000 units sold times the $2 in variable operating expenses plus the fixed operating expenses of 85,000. When we subtract that total from the 228,000 gross, $228, in gross profit, we get an operating income of $119,000. Thank you for watching the video. I hope that you learned something from the video. Please consider subscribing to my, cha my YouTube channel. Please give the video a thumbs up and visit me online at theaccountingdoctor.com.